What'd you say? Oh, action. Hey, action, folks. You know what that means? We're in Hollywood. Well, actually, we're in Westlake Village, of which I'm tortured by all of our guests on how far they had to drive. Where the hell is this? I know. Would you wait till I introduce you? <laughs> yes, it's Enlightened Up. It's with Craig Shoemaker. We interview a lot of comedians on our show because we are about enlightening up. Enlightening the fuck up. That's what I tell people. Enlighten the fuck we up. We have to. We got to get lighter. and we're okay. That's why we have... Listen, I'm just going to cut right to it. I'm not going to promote myself or this show. I'm going to tell you... I love this guy. I, I love you him. back. I loved him from afar for a really long time. <laughs> I'm actually, I see him on like the, the call list and I get excited. Like I'm like, I'm like, I have a hot date. We're old souls. Like, I think we were like, I think in a, in somewhere our, our, our paths have crossed like in another like the Roman empire or some shit. Cause you're you're I'm, what I'm, I'm, is Schumacher a German? I'm more you, going back to fifties. Fifty, okay, fifties. I think okay. we were like hanging out with Tyrone Powers. <laughs> all right, all right. Who the hell's Tyrone Power? I don't even know who that is, but I'll go with it. You know who Fred Sanford is, but you don't know oh. Tyrone Power. Which one was for, for Ty, Tyrone Power? I don't know. He's a big actor. I was, it was just a reference. You, you know how we love dummy. references. Yeah, you got to throw out the references. You, you big dummy, <laughs> Lamont. You big dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier, I keep telling him, "Sift to save it for the air." Uh, we're we're at, we both love Sanford and Son. It was one of the classic television shows of all time. Well, it was the El Segundo story you told. About Patrick Stewart. Yes. Patrick Stewart. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Yeah. So, I mentioned El Segundo. So, that brought up for you, Sanford and Son. I didn't realize he mentioned that He used that to town. always be like, I'm over there in El Segundo. <laughs> <laughs> I was always like, El Segundo. As, as a kid growing up, I'd watch it. I was like, where is El Segundo? And now you know. And now I know. And it's funny because you know how it is. Living in L.A., do, gigging in L.A., and you would get a comedian would be like, yeah, I got a, I got a, I got a show. You want to do a show? I was like, sure. Yeah. Where is it? And they'd be like, Rosemead. I'm like, where the hell's right, Rosemead? Right. Oh, there's tons of these. And towns. you would just start driving. So early on in my in my comedy career, I used to do all the like uh, the Mexican rooms. The bookers were like uh, Jeff Garcia or or Vil uh, 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 Willie Barsena or oh, something. So you went out to their hoods. You would go out to the, like some. It was like a. It was some bar. And you'd show it was funny. And you dude. feel like you're in Mexico. Dude, you drive out and yeah. like and it was a bunch of like it would always be like it was a Tuesday night and it was like some dude with a shaved head with tatted head that looked like he was some gang. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then he They're have, living La Vida Loca. Living baby. La Vida. And they'd have his and he'd have his girlfriend and you'd be doing your show and then you'd be like, All right, how far can I push this? You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like I had some joke, I forget what it was. It was some joke that made a reference to like, you know, they, they love it. Like, the, by the way, the audiences were always, hey, this fool is fucking, this guy's fantastic. Yeah, you can call it a fool. That's yeah. good. Hey, fool, you know, like, you're like, I'm doing great, you know? And then you do some joke. I forget what it was. I did some joke where, like, it was, like, referenced, like, I don't know, Mexicans or something. And I and I don't know if they were with me. And it was like, they're like, ha, 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 ha. And then it was like, Err! you know? And it was quickly me going like, yeah, but what about Persians and, <laughs> and, oh, and terrorists? I'm a terrorist. You, you know, gotta, like, hey, this fool, he's back, you know? <laughs> Oh, yeah, try looking like me and try oh, that. forget oh, it. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm the enemy. Yeah. I'm the enemy with most people. Yes, you are. I mean, when you think about it, yeah. generationally, if you look like me, a, a white guy. Yeah, it's not a good time to be a white guy. It's a good oh. time to be guilty. Like, the, I, I did, where was I? Unless I, I want to play a racist on television. Oh, you could do, there's, get, oh, there's yeah. There's lots of those well, sports Well, you know, when, when, G, when they stormed the Capitol January 6th, you were probably like, oh, there's going to be parts <laughs> for me on some movie of the week. I'm coming. Oh, like I'm thinking that, but now I am. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> well, I used to get that after September 11th. I would do radio, like I'd be doing morning radio oh. in some town, and I sort of got a couple of times that were like, oh, uh, 911 was good for your career. And I'm like, what the hell? Kind of, co would you ever say to a black guy, like, ra you know, slavery George, was good George for George Floyd, man. Yeah, that that, that was, must have been a career oh, booster. You got some good guest stars coming up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have been a tough time for you, though. I mean, that, a well, really tough time. Well, I tell people, these idiots in this country, they just think everybody is the same. Yeah. If they're from anywhere in the Middle East well, or that, that region. Listen, when and they I'm would, guilty of it, too, by well, the way. Well, listen, when they say 9 <laughs> 11 was good for your career, I'm, I was born in Iran. I grew up in America. So I tell them, I go, dude. I got this as soon as I came from Iran. I came to from America to, from from Iran in like late '78, and then like a year later, the hostage crisis happened. I go, I've been dealing with this shit. It was the hostage crisis. Then it was Iran Contra. Then it was the movie Not Without My Daughter. 
I mean, it was nonstop. There was nonstop. Iran hasn't been out of the news in 40 years. And not in a good way. Not in a good way. Yeah. We are not like Brazil or like Italians. We're like, you know, oh, you won right. the world. Oh, you won the Euro Cup. Oh, the world. Oh, you guys play soccer. Oh, you yeah. dress nice. You don't have like carnival. Yeah, we don't have carnival. <laughs> By the way, Iranians are, I mean, you know, living in LA, you, you, you run into Iranians everywhere you go. The doctors or the car dealer or the Uber driver, Iranian. We, right. we, by the way, Anthony Bourdain did a um, Parts Unknown in Iran, and he goes, they were some of the most hospitable people I've ever seen. Mm. We're hospitable. We make you eat like the Italians or the Jewish grandmother. Whatever. That's who we are. We don't know that, though, because all we knows know that. is... Uh all we know is what we see, what they choose for us to see on television, which is chosen by white dudes. Yes. And they by pick the way, what you see and I was who just, you fear. I was just talking about that the other day because you and I have had similar experiences with, and you've gone further than me when it comes to like development for TV shows, but I've sold TV shows based on me being this guy living his life in right. America, like the, yeah. the, the script. And they'll be like, yeah, we'll buy that script. And then that's it. There's nothing <laughs> after that. I'm like, yeah. And then I'm just living my life and, uh, and you know, with my wife and kids and we go through funny experiences. They're like, so you're not hijacking anything? No. They're like, no. They're like, well, you're not going to get on air. <laughs> <I'm> yeah. like, <"All> right. <laughs> and you're not talking about being Iranian 24 hours yeah. a day? Yeah, 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 is yeah, it yeah. Iranian or Iranian? I, I, I go with Iranian. Both. Iranian is, but I like, it, I go with. <laughs> I'm well, asking you no, the, no, the no, actual Iranian, answer. Iranian is the thing. It's Iranian, but people say Iranian is not nicer than Iranian. Iranian was the one I hate. That's Iranian not good. Is fingernails on a chalkboard. I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Iranian. That sounds like a, the South. Like, he's an Iranian. Ira when the people go, are you from Iran? I go, are you, are you from America? <laughs> the hell is wrong with you? Learn how to say it. Listen, that's like, that was like when, when we attacked, when, when we went to war with Iraq, George Bush was uh, doing a speech. He's like, we're going to Iraq. And I was like, oh. I go, if I'm Saddam Hussein, I'd be watching this be like, at least pronounce it right. <laughs> if you're going to attack our country, he's, he's, ready, right. he's ready to come out of the yeah. out of the spider hole yeah. just yeah. to say yeah. all right i'm out here just <laughs> to tell you it's not pronounced yeah. iraq yeah. it's not it's iraq not bum away you know like, <laughs> gosh yeah but i mean it must have been difficult because i remember listen i'm not your culture yeah and i'm offended by stuff that my friends are oh, are crazy. saying we got to go invade there you well, know it, it, well iraq they had to yeah well, the, Iraq. The, the, well, Iraq. So, 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 uh, the, the, my whole take on all of that was there was actually this great guy. His name was his name was Jack Shaheen. He was a professor, and he wrote a book called "Real Bad Arabs." R E E L, real bad Arabs, and he made a documentary out of it. And so he went back and studied the depiction of Middle Easterners, so Arabs, Iranians, Muslims. I don't care what, but all the people of that part of the world from like the 20s or so, starting from like, remember uh, um, Rudolf Valentino, right? Sure. The, the shake, right? And, and so... They were always played by, same with Native Americans, always played by a white person. White person, yeah. but, but the depiction was always negative. And his right. theory was, when you depict people like this over and over and over and over again, then when it comes time to go to war with them, it becomes that much easier. Wow. So you hear people say things like, oh, let's just bomb the whole goddamn, let's just right. bomb the whole right. goddamn, we'll just, we'll just bomb. My and, friend says, let's go get the sand fleas. I mean, I, like, how do you, what, what's, do you realize that they're, they're children? There's children, there's you know, people there's, living. These are human beings? I just don't get it. Listen, I. I it's all I, coming clear, though, with the uh, Afghanistan thing. Dude, Some people are starting to wake up. Dude, it's crazy to me because yeah. here's the thing. I, I, I always say, like, we, one of the, one of the biggest, uh, uh, um, atrocities of our of our country is we don't travel outside of our country enough not and i didn't you know once we don't, I, we don't make a phone call outside we of don't the make country. a phone call I nobody came, knows anything what goes on dude, in the other parts of the world when i came to america like those first several years i didn't really travel i mean you'd go to mexico or something right that was it but and then you'd come back and be like oh well the resort was nice the drive was a little rough but the resort, <laughs> the resort yeah, from the hotel to the from the airport to the resort was plenty, rough i got plenty of chiclets <laughs> plenty of chiclets <laughs> but i went you know with the, when when we did our first uh, so so mitzi shore put me ahmed ahmed aaron cater and at that time Sam Tripoli into a group and it was called the Arabian Nights. This was in 2000 before September 11th happened. Oh. And Mitzi, as you know, was kind of a guru of comedy and yeah. she, she used to have like black night and Latino night and the sure. ladies night. So she wanted a Middle Eastern night. That was your theme as that a was, Middle Eastern. That Tri was Tripoli theme. is also Tripoli is half Armenian as mom's Armenian. So this is what happened. So Mitzi, okay. so I was the only, so I became a regular at the comedy store, either 99 or 2000, whatever it was. I was the only comedian from that part of the world that was a regular at the club. And, you know, people don't know this, but when you're a regular at the club, that means you call in on a Monday. You're like, I'm available these nights. And 
they put you up on any random night and yeah. you gig. You're so, on the list and yeah. That's it. So you gotta then, be passed though by Mitzi. You gotta be passed yeah. by Mitzi. Yeah. And so then so then she's like so then when so she was Mitzi was Jewish and she's watching television and there was the latest uprising, this was in two thousand, between the Palestinians and the Israelis and the Jews in Israel, and so she th- she thought, okay, there's going to be a need for a positive voice for Muslims and Middle Easterners in the very near future. This is before September 11th. Mm. It's almost like she had a vision. So she goes, I want to do this Arabian Nights show. And at the time, I was the only, and, and Iranians aren't Arabs, but still, she wanted to call it Arabian Nights. Sure. That's fine. Got so Close enough. So at that point, she... As long she, as it's not Arabian. As long as it's not Arab. <laughs> Arab night. Camel night. Um, so she had seen Ahmed, and so she brought Ahmed on. I'd seen Aaron Cater, who was half Palestinian. I introduced him. And then Sam, I knew Sam. Sam had been trying to get into the club over and over and not getting passed. And finally, I told them, I go, uh, I go, hey, uh, I think Sam is half Armenian. Does that count? They go, sure. So they threw him in. <laughs> Craig, I'm so, we had an Indian guy. India has nothing to do with Iran, but or, or Middle East. I mean, sure. it, so it was, we had an Indian guy. We had a girl who was a white girl who did a belly dance. So she put ah. her in. It was crazy, <laughs> and we started this whole thing, and it was interesting because I, at first I didn't know. I was like, before, well, before social media, before so social media, it had to be word of mouth or word of mouth, or, but, or, or a mail with a stamp. You would find what we did was like, like, because she goes, I want to do Arabian Nights. I go, who wants to come to an Arabian Nights show? I was, first of all, I go, you know, when you do Black Night at the comedy <laughs> store, there's a lot of like, there, there's a big black population, and there's a lot of black comedians. Mm-hmm. I go, we're the only four or five comics. So if people come next month, they're going to see the same shit over and over again. I was like, who's going to do this? So what we did was we found like the Iranian student group, the Arab student group, the Egyptian student group. We just oh, found that was smart. UCLA, USC, and we just gave away tickets. We papered the room the first time out. And we packed Killed it. it. We Killed packed it? it, yeah. And people came and they're like, oh my God, there's people from our backgrounds doing shows. You know what? That is a formula that I saw work with Russell Peters. Yeah. Years ago, I'd stopped to see him in uh, Irvine during the week. Yeah. I'm going, how's this guy? Because I didn't really know him. How's this guy selling out? On like a Monday night, I stopped by. He goes, hey, man. Oh, yeah. And I I watched the formula. Yeah. It's people that have been completely underserved. Completely. He empowers them. He goes, where are my my Koreans at? Yeah. The whole act, you know, know, where are my Filipinos? Yeah. And now the Filipinos who have been just dismissed. dismissed and yeah. diminished. Yeah. They're going, he's talking about me even though he's ripping on them. Yeah, yeah. And that's well, how you empower people. So that's such a, that was such a smart idea, and it caught on. Well, it caught on, but also, like, so what that the, what that allowed us to do was that Arabian Nights turned into the Access of Evil comedy tour yeah. with me, Ahmed, and Aaron, and Dino Bidala comes out on Comedy Central, and then we travel for the first time to the Middle East. Mm-mm. In 2007, we did 27 sold-out shows in 30 days in five countries, Lebanon, Kuwait, uh, in Dubai, which is in the United Arab Emirates. Um, and then we did, did you uh, do Iran did not do, I can't do it. First of all, having made fun of the you know leadership <laughs> in Iran, I can't go back to Iran. Do, I mean, do you feel like you're on, I'd be afraid you're on a list. I'm sure I'm on some list there. Like, so yeah. that's the whole point why I can't go back because yeah. again, the people of Iran are amazing. And I have fans that are Iranian fans yeah. that will hit me up on Instagram I do clubhouse shows in Farsi now. I've just started doing clubhouse shows in Farsi where I'm hosting a show and I'm interviewing people that are celebrities in the Iranian community. And people call in from Iran or tune in on clubhouse. It's amazing. But but actually landing in Iran would be, I think, dangerous because, <clears throat> first of all, again, the people are amazing. The government is very oppressive. And it could sure. be one of those situations where they'll be like, Oh hey, uh, you did this joke about the supreme leader, and let's go talk about it. And and yeah. I think it's one of those things where we'll be like, you and know, they, that's they call your you last talk. That's your last talk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So so I didn't do any shows in Iran, and the other barrier to doing shows in Iran is how proficient are they in English? Because I only feel comfortable doing stand up in English. Absolutely, and most people in other countries they do study English as a second language. Yeah, so a lot of the Arab countries have like... They you know, send the kids to college in England and America. Or they have like, like American University of Beirut, right. yeah, American right. University of Cairo. American. So when we first went out, we would do shows, and it was like, like Egypt was amazing. Like Cairo is one of the most densely populated cities in the world. So we would do a show in some center, uh, like a, it was kind of like, a, almost like, a, uh, um, uh, like an amphitheater type setting, 
and the and the venue sat like a thousand. It was a thousand people, and then outside the venue there was screens, and people were watching us outside. Like you know how like sometimes they'll show like during the World Cup or some 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 sporting event, yeah. there's people outside the stadium. People were outside watching us on sure. a screen. Sure. Oh yeah, the overflow. The overflow. Right. And it was. I mean, Craig. I feel like we went going from America to the Middle East. We were the first group of American comedians performing for the people of the Middle well, East. Plus, you're going to pack it because they're starving for it. expats that live there. They're going. Oh my god, I got live comedy. They wouldn't care if you were. I'm mean, no offense. They wouldn't yeah, care if you of were. Of course. A piece of shit. They don't care. Open micer. Uh, absolutely. They're like, Somebody's talking to us and trying to make us laugh. I they're felt celebrating like, just being there, dude. I felt like we became the Beatles over right. the Atlantic. By, by the time right. we landed, we landed in Dubai and they go, oh, there's a press conference. I go, press conference? Who's yeah. coming to our press conference? <laughs> we show up at some hotel. There's like 20 news outlets. They're like, uh, Reuters, uh, you know, John Schmoley from Reuters. How does it feel to be here? And then someone like, uh, from the Gulf Times, uh, I would like to ask you, how is comedy in America? I mean, it was everywhere. Al Jazeera, Al let's Jazeera. hear from you. Everybody. <laughs> oh, and it wow. was amazing. And so, but, but going back to the, to the idea of you know, this idea of like, oh, let's just bomb these people. You realize 99.99% of the people living in those countries are just like us trying to make a living, yeah. trying to earn money, trying to feed their family. They don't care. This whole thing of like Americans going like, you know, let's, let's get them. Cause they, they you know, they, they're, they're called, you know, they want death to America. I go, you, you know how egocentric that is for us to to yeah, think like that people are walking around going. People are waking up every morning yeah. thinking, like, I wonder what America's doing today. We must, we must destroy America today. I don't have a job, <laughs> but you know what would really help me is <laughs> if I killed some Americans. That would, that would really help me and my family. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, it doesn't make any sense. People are so ignorant here. And by the way, I was raised with this. Yeah. You know, one of my, my first comedy bit was a racist bit. Yeah. About, uh, is it, what does the song go? It was to the bum, Beverly Hillbillies. Bum, bum. No, oh, no, it was uh, worse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it was, yeah. It was to the Beverly Hillbillies. This is after the, uh, come listen to a story about a man named Gured. I just made yeah, up yeah. a name. Yeah. A poor desert man barely kept his fat camel fed. Yeah. Then one day he was shooting at the Shah. Next day he was bowing to the Ayatollah. That's it. And yeah. I, and I, was just, <laughs> I didn't know anything. I knew Absolutely. what they showed me on television. Yeah. They see this guy with a headdress and he's you know, directing the people. And, yeah. and they're burning American flags. Yeah. Oh, don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. They'll come after you. Yeah. In the meantime, we're all attacking one another here. Dude, I We're saw... already doing death to America in our own country if you're in another party that people don't Absolutely. like. Absolutely. And, and it's funny because the thing is, it's like, yes, there are, obviously, politically speaking, there are some people who might be thinking about that or using that. You know, death to America is a tool they use the same way our politicians use get those, you know, get those ragheads or whatever that right, is. Right, exactly. And and it's funny. I saw Ted Koppel go back to Iran because Ted Koppel, Nightline was created because of the hostage crisis. That's right. Before the hostage crisis, there was no Nightline. Mm -hmm. And then they did, they started calling it, originally it was called something like America held hostage the Iran crisis, and it was day one twelve. Yep. Day one That's by right. day one twenty two, they decided to call it Nightline and cover other news pieces as well. But basically, the, the hostage crisis was the main thing, and it's on YouTube. People should go look it up. Ted Koppel. Oh yeah, Iran, it's amazing. It, it, the media owns the narrative, and they're yeah. going to dictate the narrative that you yeah. end up believing. This is what yeah. I tell people all the time. This is why we even have this show. Yeah, yeah. We got to shift the narrative into our own, which is about. Connection with people, connection. not dis disconnection. Yeah, and they find your enemies for it and define them. Yeah, like I, I got in arguments back, you know, because I'm, I'm really about all people, you know, yeah. being equal and all that. Yeah, this guy's come, like basically tell me they're coming after you. What are you going to do when they do this? I go, where are you getting your information from? Yeah, you get information from, from profiteers, yeah. from people that benefit from your fear. Yeah, they benefit like these. Industrial com military industrial complex. They oh yeah, literally run the world. Well, that's and who benefited. Step, that's yeah, who benefited from Afghanistan. Of course, who, yeah. Who else? Yeah, yeah. They're saying how bad it was for everyone, not for like ten billionaires. Yeah, it certainly wasn't. Yeah, this is exactly why we were there. Yeah, and how people aren't stepping back and coming up with that realization and protesting this. Yeah, and yeah. not vote for anyone who's yeah. going to follow that paradigm. Yeah, I, it's beyond me. There was one congresswoman who voted against the I war know. in Afghanistan, Barbara Lee. I, I, that was that's it. That's right. That was the only one who said, "Let's step back and look at this yeah. before we go in." Yeah. And everybody else was like, go, go, go. And, and the reason so, I liked Obama, by the way, was he voted against the war. Yeah, yeah. Originally, when he was a junior senator. Yes, yes. yes. That's the only reason I was, like, really into him. I was yeah. like, okay, that's a guy. I am not for these bullshit wars. I agree with they you. They all turn out to be bullshit. It Vietnam, all, same thing. Yeah, It yeah. is all nation building. Yeah. How do we not get it? It just it drives me nuts. It's nuts. Have and you so, ever played Vietnam? 
Never played Vietnam. I did. Uh, I did. I did Indonesia. I played Jakarta. You did. I played Jakarta, and I played. <laughs> it sounds uh, like a character in a movie. I played Jakarta. I played Jakarta. <laughs> I am Jakarta. <laughs> By the way, your name reminds me of Philadelphia. What? Oh, Jabroni. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, he's a Jabroni. <laughs> well, the Jabroni. It's so funny. The Jabroni thing happens a lot. So, so that. So again, being from Iran. And then the Iron Sheik would call people Jabroni in wrestling. You, oh, I didn't know that. You Jabroni, and now The Rock calls people Jabroni. And so here's oh, I was I was trying no. to figure it all out because my father, back in Iran, my father was a successful businessman, but he had also had friends who were professional wrestlers and boxers and all that stuff. But I'm talking like Greco-Roman, like Olympic wrestling. Oh, right? I got you. Yeah. And so the Iron Sheik used to be a real wrestler. A real wrestler. Yeah. And so when I first heard Jabroni, Not I had a lot of money in that though. Well, not a lot of money, but in these countries where that, that wrestling is is a big deal, oh, they're, they're oh, okay. held up as heroes, and I don't know what they how they make money, but I'm sure they. Right. So, I thought for a second. I go, is it possible that my father crossed paths with the Iron Sheik at some point and like rubbed them the wrong way, and now the Iron Sheik came to America and took my last name <laughs> and turned it into a derogatory <laughs> term? That's what I thought. I was like, what are the chances that my name Jobrani would become Jabroni? I was like, so I looked it up. And you know what Jabroni? Jabroni is comes from day jobber. Day, so the guys who are like in the tights that don't have a name. So like you got the Hulk, you know, the, you know Hulk Hogan and you got uh, Andre the Giant and the, the Rock. All these people have names. Yeah. That guy who gets thrown around is a right. day jobber. He's a Jabroni. So that's the... That's one genesis of where the term jabroni came from. And so they would call them jabronis from that. So this could literally be named after your family. No, it had nothing to do with my family. It was the guys. How do you in, know? Is no, it, because. It, no. How do you, didn't you find out if the sheik knew your day, dad and didn't like day, your dad? Day jobber. Di, jobber. You're a jobber. You're a jabroni. That's how. Beca- the, the, oh. so, the, so, so the epidemiology of that the what is that what it is the the you know the the genesis of it comes yeah. from day jobber your jobber your jabber your jabroni <laughs> that's how from what i read online that i'm I sure there was like an italian like uh and well i'm from philly and a lot of italians jabroni it, hey, he's a jabron hey yeah he's i don't a know Goomba. maybe there's something a, that there's t- like a lot of those <laughs> yeah yeah well, anyway, so... The Metagon. I mean, they have all those, like, kind of derogatory things that they say. Well, yeah. It's so, so funny. They talk real normal English. And yeah, so they yeah, get yeah. to... Yeah. My buddy, my buddy, does, he, he refuses. It, it, you know, calamari, right? Yeah, yeah. He, refu- he calls it galamar. I go, where are you getting Gala- the G? Where yeah, are you getting yeah, the yeah, A-D? Yeah. I don't understand how, all how they come up with... Eh, eh, yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. when they when they get into the... Pasta into the, fajou. Oh. Hey. Yeah, 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 I know. It's funny because... But your name is so cool, though, that way. But, you should be. You should honor it. But, Craig, how many, times, <laughs> how many times have I been... My name, it's funny because I'll do like a TV interview. Yeah. Or I'll do... Because I'm sure you get Schumacher oh. instead of Shoemaker. I, right? I have a bit about it in my act. Yeah. That's how you have to address it. Well, that's what I have, but I right. but but they still doesn't dude, doesn't matter. Have, doesn't connect. I have. So <laughs> I'll be doing an interview, and and it's like this: like the person is well read, and they are you know they've done research on me, and they're like, and then you came in, <laughs> I believe November fifth of nineteen seventy eight. Your family then immigrated, and I'm like, oh, what a great interview! And then it ends with them going like, so that's been Maz Jabroni. I'm like, no, you had it all right until you got to my. I'm name. laughing because I've done the same exact uh, thing. And this woman like see me so many times. Uh, You're my favorite comedian, Craig Schumacher is with us uh, today. Uh, no, you did yeah. not say that. That's my pet peeve. Yeah. I had a guy recently. I, I won this uh, golf tournament. Yeah. And he calls me up, you know, and he says, Craig Schumacher. And I'm walking up. I go, don't call me that. My name's Shoemaker. Then I got up for another award. He goes, Schumacher. I can't send it right away. It's, uh, people don't understand. How about how can the, you not listen? How to about at the comedy club your, oh. when your fan it's packed? Your fans yeah. are there, and they're like, and his opening act is Charles Davis. Yeah, and you're here for him now. <laughs> Give it up for Craig Schumacher, and you're like, this dude, they're here for the me. The announcer, dude, yeah. the announcer. Yeah. I get so many times, Maz Jabroni, and I <laughs> and I know because after the show, the Persians will come over. We enjoyed the show. By the way, he messed up your name. <laughs> I'm like the whole show. You were thinking about the name, weren't you? <laughs> is uh, now where does that name come from, Maz? So the full name is Maziar, oh. and I love Maziar. So people call me Maziar. I'm all I'm all with it. Wow. But at some point, I decided to go down to Maz, which was also my nickname at points. And so, 
Yeah, I, and I, I have a million ways to remind people to say Maz. I go, like, Lamaz, Mazda, Maserati, Mazatlan. <laughs> I know, you got to have all those techniques. <laughs> so many yeah, of but them. Now you get to the hotel. Oh, God. You, gotta, you have to have it. Yeah, you have your little speech, yeah. and they still don't. They still don't really hear it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. I've had so many times, and it's funny. Mazarel? Dude, I have, Is a, that it? Maz- I have a podcast. Mazarel? Yeah, yeah. No, ma- I have a podcast where, so I had on, um, gosh, I forget his name right now, um, he was he was uh, um, uh, part of OJ's. We'll, we'll edit out your search for this name of yeah, your exactly. best friend. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> he was part of OJ's uh, um, uh, dream team. The the you know uh, what was the name? If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. Oh, um, Johnny Cochran. Johnny. Co- so he's Johnny Cochran's uh, right hand guy, and he's this great. He's a great oh, speaker. I know you're talking about. Yeah, uh, smaller African American yes, guy. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And he was great, and he was on my podcast. Yeah, back to school with Maz Jobrani. And he kept saying, Maz, if I could tell you one thing, <laughs> but I don't want to correct him. He's so eloquent. He's such a great, I was like. Lewis is his last name? Is it Lewis? Uh, oh, man, God. that's driving me nuts. I don't know why I'm forgetting his name right now. It's going to come to me. Um, I know you're talking about Anyway, but, but it, was, it, was one, it was my show, and he kept calling me Maz. <laughs> well, people in Philadelphia, they shorten names, and that's your nickname. Do they do that? You grew up in L.A., right? Uh, I grew up in Marin, Northern okay. California. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, excuse me. Hello. 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 I remember Marin, Marin so, so I was that's watching. Like well-to-do folks. Folks, well, let me, well, let me tell you, I was watching, so I went to high school, Redwood, where Robin Williams went for, I, I was believe, about to a say, year. That's where Robin ended up living in yeah, Marin. He yeah. lived in Marin. He went to the, I, he went to the, my high school years before. And in 1985 or 86, um, the, the Kansas City Royals were playing the St. Louis Cardinals in the World Series. And there was a player, they had a shortstop, shortstop named Buddy Biancalana, who had gone to, him. he'd gone to our high school. So I remember watching, the World Series, and Al Michaels comes on. He's like, Buddy Bianca Lana from Marin <laughs> County, California, home of the hot tub. And I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. Home of the hot tub. I don't know. <laughs> I remember that player. Yeah. Mazarel? Mazar- Mazarel. How do you say it? How do you say it? Maziar. Oh, geez, I was Mazi Yar, Mazi Yar. All right, so that's what I'm going to call you from now on. If you can I say Maz, it, you can say Mazi, Mazi. We I shorten think. names in Philadelphia. Like, my last name is Shoemaker. You know my yeah. nickname, right? Yeah. Shoe. Everybody calls me Shoe. Shoe. What's up, Shoe? Steve Wartenberg's Wart, Stagliano, yeah. Stag. Yeah. Now, Scott Astor yeah. was not into this. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he hated it. Call don't, me don't, Stir. Don't call me ass. <laughs> that's how, but do they do that in Marin? They shorten your name? Well, you know, we yeah, of course, we had nicknames and stuff. But, like, I, it was funny. I, I studied, I actually, for my junior year in college, college i did a year abroad in italy so i speak italian i i used to fluently wow. but over there they would call me mazi mazi because it's just it, that's what they called and, everything and, sounds great out of italian and also by the way italian if you have an a italian the beauty of it, the english is the tough one because we have the silent letters and yeah. then a could be because there is like uh maz there was a baseball player uh Mazur- mazuroski mazuroski something bill mazuroski Maz- mazuroski right yes. so there was this guy who used to coach our little league team is like i'm gonna call you maz yeah his nickname was maz yeah, yeah I'll call you Maz. I was like, it's Maz. But you can't, right? That's the problem with English. You could be Maz or Maz, right? That's the problem. But Italians, with Italians, yeah. they pronounce it the way it's spelt. So a lot of times you'd be like, how do you spell whatever? Craig. They'd be like, Craig. Craig. So you hear the A and the A and I. The I, yes. Uh, Craig. Oh, here, have we shorten everything. Yeah. I'm um, Craig. Yeah. Like Craig. Craig. And you're like, huh? Is it that's, C-R-E-G? That's no, Craig. is Craig. Like shoemaker, hey, shoe, shoemaker, shoemaker is S C H U, right? No, so, no, how do you do it? no. S S H S H. Did you just say? I'm my sorry. My name is literally <laughs> all, all over this oh, wall. So, so, so let me tell you how they. <laughs> it's put, a shoe, and yeah, make you yeah, take yeah. your shoes. Oh, yeah. now you're gonna get me going. Yeah. No, like they, you're the hotel so, clerk. So they would do. So, so, but no, in Italian, it, there's no H, so it'd be S C I to get the sh. So, yeah, you'd be S C I sh, shoe, S C I to get the I, and then. Maker. Uh, shoe, uh, shoemaker. Uh, shoemaker. Yeah. yeah, they would they would pronounce Put an it. emphasis on a yeah. different yeah. Isn't that accent? crazy? On a different yeah. Well, they have a great language though. Fantastic. It's a romantic language. I love that. that's why I learned it. I married a Japanese woman. Arigato. That is so not the romantic. Uh, don't oh. Arigato. Every time I every time I, every time I golf, I think about my, my father in law. Uh Gusha. 
<laughs> that's not romantic. <laughs> Have you been to Japan? Uh, oh yeah, that's another. We we visited Japan. It was amazing. Oh, isn't it great? What a great culture. Now, now you're not huge, but I'm like six two. I am big in Japan. Like no, oh, yeah. no pun intended. Oh yeah, yeah. This guy says me. Oh, I'm big in Japan you, tonight. This, this guy <laughs> says oh, you look like a James Bond. <laughs> By the way, folks, I'm not doing a racist accent. It's yeah. actually what he sounded that's like. It, that's what drives isn't me that nuts. Crazy when you imitate somebody, they go, "That's racist." Dude. No, I'm doing an impression of somebody that sounds like that. I one of like the reasons right now I sound like I'm from Philadelphia. Where are you from? I'm not making yeah. fun of them. When I was when I was when I was a kid, I I loved Peter Sellers. And uh, he got to do uh, Clouseau. He got to do the party. All that nowadays no, you can't. They would never. No, yeah, yeah, the party is one no. of the greatest movies ever, right? Oh my God! And he was the hero of the movie. He oh, was. The, and he was playing like a really racist yeah, Indian yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bakshi. See, I'm doing an impression Bakshi of him. Something. By the way, I'm not being racist. Yeah, I'm you're doing, doing an impression of him. Doing a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It drives me nuts. So yeah, Japan. My first time there, and this guy goes, "You." Hard to boiled. Hard so he, he kept telling me I'm hard to boil. Hilarious. Yeah, he kept repeating. I was like, what does that mean? And I turned to everybody. I go, is he complimenting me? Yeah. You look like a James Bond. Hard James boiled. Bond. Yeah, but what was the reaction that they had there? Of course, you're playing all English speaking. No, no I wasn't doing a show. We just went to visit. <gasps> no. Yeah, I just went with my wife and kids to spend two weeks. You go we, everywhere. We had Last a time blast. I talked to you, went to Desert Springs. You had a Dude, wonderful oh time. Oh, my <laughs> God. <don't even. laughs> they stopped doing that. They stopped doing that show. That show ended. <laughs> Because oh. of you. Oh, Mike. Because it was the worst. <laughs> that guy, and he loves you. The guy loves you. Know, he and does. he drove you to his nice place. <laughs> Well, supposedly these guys who book this, for those of you who don't know, we get we get booked all over the place. Yeah, and once yeah. in a while people will be like, so they were like, oh, it's in Palm Springs, and we'd been locked up for a year. And so bring I told, your family. told my wife, I go, let's go to Palm Springs. We're going to go have a, a paid vacation. That's what yeah. I tell my family all and, the time. And the, and the name of the hotel was like some oasis. It, it, the name was misleading. I go, this is an oasis. We're going <laughs> to. We looked it up online. You, I knew I should have known it was bad when usually, oh, even if it's a bad place, if you look it up online, at least they've got good angles. <laughs> Even the angles look bad. My wife was, was like, I don't know. By a, a, a photographer had a Polaroid. God. They like po they put Polaroid shots uh. in the brochure. You're going, oh, you, you couldn't make this like look a little better that day? No bueno. No, no bueno, no. amigo. I knew something was wrong when I went into the room and they had an old like a rotary phone. <laughs> Dude, we like, showed up. We showed up at the hotel. And a clock radio. When's the last time you saw an old clock radio? First of all, usually when you come off the when you come off the freeway, quite often in any town, near the freeway is like a rougher part of town. And then as you start driving away from the freeway and up, as you go up, usually gets better. Up is usually where rich people live. Yeah, the higher we went, the less the less teeth. The, the teeth. I was looking around. I was like, there's less teeth in everyone. It just got worse. I knew, I knew things were wrong when I saw this, like, Someone had lost their legs. I'm not exaggerating. No. They had two stumps from diabetes. Yeah. And they're in a wheelchair on the road with like with a, a bag of like whatever. They had a giant bag of whatever with no yeah. no legs with an oxygen tent oh, yeah. tank. Yeah. Smoking a cigarette oh. while driving an electric. Bad news. <laughs> Bad news. I'm going, how bad is your life? Yeah. When that's your life. Yeah. And when then I'm going out for a cruise on my on my and as cruiser wheelchair. As you're thinking to yourself, wow, what a what a horrible place that this person's living. You look you look at your navigation, it goes <laughs> arrival one minute. You're like, wait a minute. This is the hotel? <laughs> this is the hotel? I thought it was gonna I thought it was just en route. <laughs> I put it in my navigational system. I put the place and I, and it said why. That's what why? it is. It yeah, yeah, why? exactly. Why? why are you going? Why Craig, why are you going? What's funny is I I had a pretty good experience there. Then I talked to you. I was howling, laughing. Like you, Dude. you literally left. Have you ever heard of this before? I don't know if this happened when you were there. Nighttime, right when people are asleep. I'm not exaggerating when I tell you this. Yeah. I've never seen this in my life. Yeah, kids, gigantic families of kids in the pool at 1 a.m. Oh screaming God. like it's yeah. Like I, in these hot spring no, things, dude. This was this was so. That's part of the that was part of the selling point. I go, oh, hot springs. We're gonna go into natural hot springs, and we're gonna you know, take soaks and this you know, oasis, good for our skin. Oasis hot springs. I'm there. This is gonna. Meanwhile, be my... there's oil in there, bro. <laughs> first of all, we show up at the main hotel. The main hotel like looked like they hadn't like. First of all, they hadn't upgraded it since 1976, possibly. They Paneling on the walls. They yeah. hadn't cleaned it since 1981. 
And then I look and I'm like, oh, people are in the pool. And I'm looking around and I'm like, who, who are these people? Who are these people? And, and then I'm looking at like the rooms and the rooms are like, the, the rooms aren't private at all. Like if you open your front door, people look at, they can see into your hotel room from the pool. And I go, is this a By hotel? By the way, that's the master presidential suite. And I, I said, who was, the, who was the president? James Polk? Oh my God. <laughs> it was so, Bro, well, it was the was, presidential suite. Well, that's what, so then they said to me, they go, oh no, we have you in the villas. I go, oh, okay. I got oh. the villa. Bro, we, I, I didn't even get that, bro. We drove around to the villa. The villa had a cage. You know, like you know how like you put like there's a cage to like of you know to protect from break-ins. There was a cage before the door. There was a cage door and then the door. Like, I don't know what kind of villa this is. The villa sign, the sign telling you it's a villa, was printed on a piece of paper and put into a laminate. Not even laminated. It was like a folder. And it was hanging sideways. It, like, it, it wasn't even hanging. Someone just put it there. It was a disaster. My dog got diarrhea. He had scorpions in Bro, oh, my God. We had, it was the, I didn't want to sit on the couch because I knew I was going to get, like, fleas. And then my dog sat on the couch and threw up. And I go, oh, this is appropriate. The you know what's funny is the people, like, that think of us in show business, and we're pretty successful. Yeah. They're thinking we're living the life. Oh, no. This is only a few months ago. This was a few months ago. This is when I realized we're back to, you know how, like, that, like, was it shoots and ladders where you go back? <laughs> the pandemic took us right back to the bottom, bro. <laughs> One of my favorite. I see you on Instagram. One of my favorite. I just happened to catch it. I'm glad I did. Was you live in a parking lot of a strip oh center? Oh my god! <laughs> I happened to catch that, bro. Show. He's talking about <laughs> that was the crazy Instagram craziest. live. He goes, "I'm about to play this place." I'm going, well, "Where's he playing?" I thought he was back at the Palladium. <laughs> No, <laughs> just strip mall to parking a nails, lot, a nail salon, a Vietnamese nail salon. Dude, oh, I was howling. Dude, I was howling because I relate to it so much. Because as comedians, we don't say no. We say yeah. And at a certain point in your career, I have my agents and managers go, just tell them to contact me. Let me say no. And I go, well, the, I know the person. I know. I so know. this was a comic I knew from back in the day. She's nice enough. She runs into me and she's like, I got this show. I have a room, right? And then they'll tell you this. They'll be like, Kevin Nealon's played it. Right. Uh, you know, you know I'm going to have to talk to Nealon. He, he's like playing all these gigs. He needs to talk to his managers <laughs> so that we stop playing. Everybody's those. using Nealon's name. Nealon's get, name comes up. I, every time, lot. right? <laughs> He's he goes, booked at his other room I book. I swear to God. This guy, he would go to an opening of an envelope. I'm telling you. Exactly. Yeah, he would. And it's like, I'm sitting there. I go, well, Kevin's done it. And, you know, all these people. Okay, great. So then I go. And, and, I, and, and it's funny because the strip mall ended up being near my actual home. So I've driven by this strip mall several times. Thinking someday. And, but she, no, put she, it on your vision board. She said it was a theater. So I'm driving. I go, is there a theater near my house? Great. This is how I'm thinking. I'm like, wow, if this is th this close, maybe I'll do my next special there. And I could just walk to my special, have a film crew film me to my special. I swear to God. I drove past the parking lot and I go, I didn't see a theater. And I missed it. And I do a U-turn. I go, I must have missed the theater. Now I come up. I go, no. And as I'm driving in, I see in the corner, there's like five folding chairs and someone holding a microphone, I go, oh, God, I'm doing a parking the lot. People are in the parking lot on lawn chairs. On lawn chairs. Waiting for the great Maz Jabrani. And my bigger question is, I was like, how did you guys end up at, did you, did you buy tickets? Or are you guys just homeless and you were walking by? <laughs> Literally, you were playing. Dude. I was, they walked out of their tent. At least they walked. And they at walked least. into these car, into these, in, in, there were cars Amongst the people in the audience, people there was were like every other thing was a car. The, the most, the most, the, the busiest place in that parking lot, there was a vape store, and people kept coming out of the vape store. <laughs> I was like, I'm in the wrong business. I should open up a vape store. They had more people than you did. They had more people than I did. Oh, I was, I was losing it. Dude. I was losing my shit Dude. watching you do a Facebook live. And and what was funny was they introduced you during your. Yeah, During I kept your it going. Instagram yeah. live. They're going, here he is. And you're going, I guess I'm on. Well, <laughs> See, that's you the, took that's, us up on stage. But that's with the you. world we live in. And that's actually, what I want to talk about this because you and I both started before there was social media, but now we live in a social media oh, world. Man. And you got you to gotta wrap your head around the idea that, like, it's not about the live show as much as it is about, like, if you can kill it on social media, that helps your live show. We know that. Like, there's people that, 
have been doing it for two years, but they have a the million followers on Don't get me TikTok, yeah. and they're selling out. And then you're going to the club, and, and they're like, oh, we're going to paper the room. You go, what? I, I'm going to the club with, like, prepared material. Yeah. Like written and well crafted. I got punchlines. You know, I got. Yeah, can you believe that? I actually had people. Have you ever had this happen? This happened to me the other day, and it is a great compliment. They call me OG now. Oh yeah, yeah. Are you OG. getting that yet? I don't get. I, they go, I, I know you. You're OG. I get this. People go. Uh, my my dad's my dad's a big fan. Oh. I go. You piece of shit. <laughs> how dare you say that? How dare? How old am I? It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a great compliment, it but is. then again, though, you're going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude. yeah. Yeah, so I'm OG now, but I'm finding, and this is kind of cool, that they'll, like, these guys came back two nights. I played the comedy Chateau the other day. Yeah, yeah. And the, these guys came back. They said, you're a master at your craft. Uh, hello? So we're teaching yeah, you're like, I've been doing. Yeah, you're, I've been doing this for 30 but, years. But I want to say, will you open for me? Because you have way more followers than <laughs> yeah, I do. I know. With your two minutes of material. we got to sell some tickets. I can help you. Yeah, but yeah. You help me, yeah, you know, because yeah. we got to sell tickets. But people aren't interested well, I have, in storytelling. That's I've, a lost art. Well, I've pivoted now. So I've started, first of all, on Instagram, I got a guy helping me out. He's great. And he's been posting. Like, He's like, you got to post. You just got to keep posting. So I'm like, all right. And then I come to realize... I, I see you more than my family. Dude, you uh, and there. I... You pop up there all the time. Well, we have years of material. You can uh, right. go You can go to your stand-up. You can go to your movies. You can go to your TV shows. You can cut those down into like 30-second pieces. People keep telling me to do I got to do this. Just post it. Just post it. And all of a sudden, you go, oh, wow. And then, then I come to find out, oh, it's not even about Instagram anymore. It's TikTok. I have a friend of mine, I Nimish know. Patel. Nimish yeah. is one of the funniest dudes I know oh, out of New the York. Is he America's Got Talent? No, Nimish wrote for Chris Rock. That's me he's being out of racist New York. to everybody named Patel. Some Patel. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> no, he's the guy who owns the, ho- the, the motels. That's <laughs> pa- no. Um, so this guy, he told me, Nimish is like, listen, dude, he's like, four or five months ago, I don't have a tour. He goes, I just took my, he goes, I take a camera mm. every time I perform and I put it there. And he does a lot of crowd work. He goes, I cut it up into like 30 second oh pieces. And like the first 15 seconds is me doing my thing. The last thirteen seconds, he's got fifteen seconds. He's got um, the the like a thing. It says, "Come into Jersey, so and so and so and so, come out." He said, "All of a sudden, I got a tour. People are showing up because that's how because the algorithm on TikTok, by the way, pushes him out because he's doing so well." Oh no! So I go, you know, I'm gonna start doing it. So I started doing the same thing. I know you. I, I'm constantly watching you. you. I literally feel like your stalker. I mean, I see you all the time. I feel like you're talking to me. Well, that's this. Hey, stu- shoe, what's up? Well, that's the, but that's this I know algorithm. Who you are. <laughs> but that's the algorithm because it's funny because I go on whether I go on Twitter or Instagram, I see the same people, and then once in a while I'll be like, oh, like somebody somebody sent me a clip from Snoop Dogg. He was yeah. he, he and he and Kevin Hart were um, doing color commentary on I the Olympics. That, yeah. It was hilarious. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that's hilarious. I go, why aren't I following following Snoop Dogg? And I go to Snoop Dogg. I go, I am following Snoop Dogg. The mm-hmm. algorithm. Even though he's got like 10 million followers or whatever, the his the algorithm never pushed him to me because I hadn't like liked him in whatever six That's months. That's right. So I have I follow a lot of people on Twitter because I didn't know what I was doing. But I don't follow them. It's the same people that come up. It's the same it's literally fifty people. Same people. And I don't see anyone that I follow. Then you'll discover, you go, well, you look and you go, and oh, they're following me too. It's crazy. But my stuff's not going to them. It's that's why that's again why you got to keep posting like like the, uh, this guy that was helping me about Instagram, so he's been helping me by he he's going out and finding funny clips that people are reposting. You know, there's always like some whatever some uh, baby crying and the and then oh I have one today that made me laugh. This well, woman in a in, on a water slide. And she slides into another water slide. I mean, yeah. it's just so that's that stuff's out there, right? I mean, and so and I'm it, laughing like crazy, and so. it goes viral. So this guy's like, okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take those, and this guy's doing it for me. He's like posting them on stories, on my stories, other people's videos, other people's videos on stories. Does it drive just, you nuts? Well, I would listen. I I'd this seen formula. for the longest time. I'd seen other comedians doing this, and so what happens is if you put those on your stories. People watch, people watch, people watch. In the middle of those five stories, you put a little clip of you going, hey, it's Craig Shoemaker, and I am so excited. I'm back on tour. And then the next story is a poster of you going to be in Jersey, and then the next story is you going to be in Philly. And then it goes back to the funny clips. Muzz, when you got it's in a this commercial. business, did you, I mean, seriously. I didn't think about it. No, of course not. No, we don't want to do this. But you and I <clears> both know recently, the, re- the reason you were successful in this business when you first started out, because you also dealt with it as a business. You I, found- I was one of those people. Is that the word? 
a lot of comedians tell me that's what they used to know about me. Well, this that I knew how to promote. Yes, yeah, show business, right? They, I mean, this cliche. This, this was, and they get mad at me too. But this is when I would literally have postcards and a fan club, and I would mail them. Bro, I mail used to them do that. where I was going to be. I used to. Oh, do you go that. back that far? I How long to, have you been? I started. At it? I've been doing it twenty three years. So when I first started, I went in. I went and sat in at some like seminar. Tommy <laughs> Davidson was speaking at the seminar. It was really? after. It was after I had a uh-huh. seminar with like different people. Tommy Davidson talks about. He goes. He goes. When I first came from D.C. to L.A., I would go to these clubs. I would kill it. But he goes quickly. I realized um, people would like the show, and they'd be like, "When are you coming back?" So he said, "I would stand, or I have somebody stand outside, get their addresses." Yep. Then I would send postcards. So I remember what you just said. I get a postcard, funny picture, put the stamps on, mail it, send it to casting directors. I remember Joe Coy used to be at the Laugh Factory. We were all starting out together. Me, Joe Coy, Ken Jeong, Sebastian, all of us. Joe would kill it. Now, we would... You on know, stage. On stage. And we're like, we'd have a... Everyone everyone have a great set, right? Because it's a hot crowd. But no following. Well, we would like, after the show, oh, that was fun. So now we're upstairs, you know... Shooting the shit. Yeah. Joe's out front with little little uh, business cards. <clears throat> thank you. Passing them out. Wow. Building his following. Yeah. And that's what you had to do. But that's now what that's what greets. that is. Yeah. Now that's that's there was a TikTok. guy. There was a guy <clears throat> I grew up with in a business, and he would not do that. And he would always be angry at people that would surpass him. He would call me up. Richard Jenny. Do you remember? Yeah, Richard? of course. Yeah. 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 Genius yeah. comedian. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't have that big of a following. Yeah. I, I have people today, <clears throat> comedians, that don't know who he is. Yeah, yeah he crazy. committed suicide a few years. Yeah, ago. yeah, yeah. He would call me up. Shoe, shoe, Richard Jenny. That's a great Jenny. How, how do you how do you get so many people in Raleigh? Shoe. Yeah. What's the secret? Shoe. Yeah. He would say, "I say, Rich, you might want to talk to people. Yeah. <laughs> like, like actually relate to them, which yeah. he couldn't do. Yeah. He would go back or try to hit on women or whatever it was. I always treated it like, well, first of all, I'm still friends. You probably are this way. Are you friends with fans? Like yes, I have friends that are fans that become friends. Yes, yes, absolutely. I have tons actually. So. I just interesting story on one. I hadn't talked to him in years. He just texted me out of the blue. He was a pilot for United Airlines. He's like, hey man. He's like, I'm going to be on the first plane, passenger plane, going to Afghanistan to help people get out. Wow. I was like, holy moly, Gary Kravitz. Shout out to Gary. That is a major shout out. Yeah. I feel so bad for everyone. I mean, it's Nuts. just it really goes to show you how. How oblivious we are yeah. to other parts of the world. Yeah. I always say that with every solution, you know, whether it's healthcare, yeah, whether it's health, yeah. period. Is you go to someone else, you, this is like studying with the masters. Yeah. Some other country probably has it education. Most people are better than us. Yeah. Just go and ask. Yeah. Just go inquire. Say, how do you do it? What works for you? Yeah. And let them share that with you and then implement that. Yeah. So if they have a good policy on foreign policy or whatever it is, yeah, racism, yeah, see how someone else does it, yeah, yeah, you know, no, you're absolutely right. We're and not the leaders that we say we are. Well, what happens is I think that we are so um, like, uh, you know, we're, we're all we're all in in our in our own worlds, right? We we have our, you know, we like you said, whether it's your Instagram or your thing, we're all in our own worlds. Once in a while, you come out of that world and you go, oh, people are doing it better over here. Oh, they're like like mm-hmm. how, how many times. I was in, you know, we, you know, the Scandinavian countries is always, it's become cliche, but sometimes, you know, or even like Holland, I'm in Holland and I'm going, wow, everyone's on bicycles. Mm, mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm like, wow. And, and they seem to be forward thinking in many ways. And, I go, and you know, Denmark is named the second happiest country in, yeah. in, in the world. And I go, why don't we adapt from why. some of these places, right? Yeah. But going back to the fans, what you were saying, that's the other thing about sometimes when you agree to meet somebody, again, this goes talks about our how how we're so focused on our own selves. We think, oh, I'm the comedian, I'm this, I'm that. This somebody comes to your show and goes, you go, hey, what do you do? And they go, oh, I work with, you know, uh, whatever UNICEF, and I help people in such and such territory. You go, oh my god. And then the, you go, well, this person's an amazing person. And then you do, you befriend them. Yeah. And there are a lot of good people doing amazing things out there. I find myself connecting more with them. I'll be honest with you, didn't stand ups. Yeah. You're one of the few. And we don't know each other that well. Right. I don't even know where you live. Right. Until today when you told me how far you drove. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you do, I, I do have these connections with certain comedians. Sure. We might not know one another. We might have worked together once or twice. It doesn't matter. But I find myself connecting more outside of this kind of insulated community because that comedians can be and petty and yeah. catty and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. 
but I'll, I'll find the ones that I resonate with because that you, speak to my heart. Yeah, you have more interest. The fact that, first of all, the fact that you have a family right there that, that, out the gate, the fact that you, like, you love, you know, we're talking about your fishing trip or, or all this other stuff. Like, you have other interests outside. One of my, one of my like, it would, I almost would feel sad for, for some comics. Sometimes you, like, run into a comic at a club. You're like, how you doing, man? And they'll be like, well, I got a meeting with CBS, yeah. and I'm working on it. And I go, no, 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 how are you doing? Right. What's going on? Let's yeah. talk about something else. And they're all there. Oh, you know, you're, oh. I'm with you on that. I you watched know? the Comedy Store documentary first. I was a little jealous because I wasn't asked to be in it. I, I was to know the so producer. pissed off I wasn't in that. Listen to me. Be happy because I actually then I got reflective just like you did. They talked about it being family. I'm going, I don't want to be in that family. I want to be with my family. Well, no, I'll tell that's you. Not, that's, a dis- that's a total dysfunctional family. I, I'm going to, well, no. All I'm, about what they're getting and what they're not getting and all that selfish shit. I will say not this. Not for it. No, no, I will say you this. You look like I, you're disagreeing. No, I'm going to disagree with you that's on this. Okay. Because, Go ahead. Because I, for, first of all, the reason I was upset I wasn't in that was because it really was my home club. Wow. And and it was somewhere that I feel like I was there. Like, I came in in the, ba- in the, in the dark years, like 99 to. 2000 when you know on a tuesday it was funny dude it, it was, was dark yeah it was, cra- well, it was dark but it was, the murders in the parking lot well mitzi first <laughs> of all mitzi i love mitzi and and i always say like her story with me was interesting because when she first made me a regular mitzi shore the founder of the comedy store mitzi shore, right yeah. so so first of all comedy store to me eddie murphy was my inspiration mm-hmm. like that's why i wanted to be a comedian when i was 13 years old i come down to la um, just to visit, and we happen to stay near the comedy store. And as we're driving by the club, it's just it's a black wall with all the all the names of the yeah, performers yeah. on the wall. And the people we're with go, "Oh, uh, Eddie Murphy performs in there." I go, "Oh my god, wow. let's go see him." I'm 13. Yeah. They go, yeah. uh, "No, you're too young." Yeah. Now, here's a, a button on the story. So let me just I, I, I'll tell the whole story real quick. So 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 years later, audition, become a regular, Mitzi. The way to become a regular, you perform in front of her. First, you do three minutes, then six minutes, then ten minutes. Different nights, you got to come mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. You got to pass, pass, pass. I do the ten minutes as I'm walking by. She sits in the back chair right by the exit. You have to walk past her after you've performed. And the whole time you're walking past her, you're thinking to yourself, "Please grab my arm. Please grab my arm. Please grab my arm." <laughs> because if she doesn't, that means you're gone. She doesn't want you. Sure. And go come back maybe in six months or a year. Mm-hmm. So as I'm walking past her, it's all slow motion. The room is totally dark. You don't see anybody. I'm coming past her. It felt like the set went good. I'm coming. I'm coming. Her arm reaches out. It grabs my forearm. Mm. All of a sudden, I'm like, holy moly, I'm going to become, this is it. This is, I'm going to, my career is going to take off. This is where Eddie Murphy performed. I'm going to get a sitcom. I'm going to be winning an Academy Award. Like everything's in my head. Mm -hmm. She pulls me close. I lean in and she's like, it's like a mafia situation. She's eating popcorn back there the whole time. (laughs) So I lean in. She goes, you're very funny. And I go, thank you, Mitzi. She goes, I'm going to make you a regular. I go, thank you, Mitzi. And she goes, have you ever thought about wearing the hat? I go, what hat? (laughs) Because you know, the hat and the gown. I go, hat and gown. I realize she wants me to wear a turban and a dish dasha on stage. And I'm sitting there. I'm like, uh, go, you don't want to uh, talk back. I don't want to talk back. And I go, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, of course. And she goes, all right, call in on Monday. And I sort of got a hat. I'm wearing a hat. I walk three steps because there's steps right next to her. I walk down the steps. I end up in the hallway and I go, holy shit, what did I just agree to do? I go, she wants me to wear a turban on stage. This is crazy. And I'm like, what did I just, oh my God. And then so now I'm like worried. I'm going, what the hell? And I'm going, okay, there's one possible. She was getting old at the time. I go, maybe she'll forget and I'll be good to go. And at the time, do you remember Freddie Soto? Remember Freddie Soto? Of course. Freddie was one of the most funniest people I know. And his widow, now he's passed away, yeah. was Corey. They called her Queen Corey. She was the booker at the comedy club. Right. So on Monday, I get a call from Corey. This now, past Monday. The, the Monday after I... The, oh, the, okay. No, no. Okay. Uh, the Monday after Mitzi had passed. So on a Sunday, I performed for you're her. You're praying that she's not going to mention I'm hoping Corey will call me and be like, okay, so when are you available right. to perform? So... Uh, Corey calls me, and at the time, Corey knew me because I'd been doing, like, you can perform at the comedy store without being a regular. If somebody, like, has, you know, a private show they're booking, Mitzi's, sure. you're, you're not you're not right. in the club. You're right. just, like, an outsider. Right. So I'd met Corey around the way. 
So Corey calls me up. She goes, hey, Maz, I heard the good news. I go, yeah, Corey. She goes, congratulations. I go, yeah, I'm happy. And she goes, and Mitzi told me you're going to wear the outfit. I go, oh, no. I go, no, no. No. And I go, I go uh, Corey, I got a question for you. I go, um, just wondering, if I were to not wear the outfit, what, <laughs> what would happen? She goes, Maz, I, oh, no. I, I just want to tell you, you know, <laughs> Mitzi is a visionary. And if she felt like you should wear the outfit, you should wear the outfit. And I go, well, what happens if I don't wear it? She goes, well, you know, I'm not saying you won't get spots, but. You probably won't get spots. Come to find out later, by the way, Craig, that she told Mark Marin when she told Mark Marin to wear a scarf because she goes, "You're like the poet comedian." Oh, so wow. in his podcast, he talks about it. He goes, "I wear I, I wore a scarf for a little bit." Yeah, she's trying to kind of co-create something. She's trying to. She was a visionary. She was a visionary. I mean, so she was, came up with the the Arabian Nights. She came up with the Arabian, and also, right? by the way, Cor, one of Corey's selling points. She goes, "Maz." Mitzi, if she sees something in you, she goes, she helped Roseanne carve that, create that That's character. Right, yeah. She used to go clothes shopping with Roseanne. I go, okay. So now she's going to turban shop with you. By the way, by the way, Mitzi, but, but, but any Where vision, do you go for that? But all turbans vision, are us. Or? Yeah, turbans are us. But all visionaries aren't 100% hits, right? Cause, no. Because Mitzi also had a guy named Jackie Bananas. Yeah. And so, so the story goes, from what I heard years later, was that Jackie used to do a show, and at the end he would get into a banana suit, and that was his closing number. Yeah. M one day Mitzi sees him yeah. and goes on the and says to him, "You're gonna, you're Jackie Bananas," <laughs> and he goes, "Excuse me," she goes, "Your whole act is the banana." So now this poor guy had to be a banana his whole act, and we <laughs> we never heard of him since. So anyway, so I find, I try to find a way to get out of this and I negotiate with Corey. I'm like, what if I wore like, what if part of the show was this? And, but I really don't want, I don't want, first of all, I don't want my other comedian friends being like, what the hell is he doing? Oh yeah. You're done with comedians. You do that. You're done. And me, yeah. I don't want to be the turban guy. So then I remembered, um, there was, so there'd been this guy who would make fun of the mullahs who are the clergy in Iran he used to make fun of them on Iranian television in America. And so he would be, you know, making mm -hmm. fun of these guys. And so he was at a rally. There was some like anti-government rally in Westwood. Mm -hmm. He was there. I guess some pro-government people showed up and they threw rocks at him. One of the rocks hit him in the eye, blinded him. Mm. So I took that as ammunition and I called up Corey. And at that time, my father, uh, yeah, my father it. had also moved back to Iran at that point. Oh, yeah. So I go, Corey, yeah. listen. It would be a risking your life kind of thing. I go, listen, I could wear the turban. I think it's a great idea, by the way. <laughs> I really think great idea. I really, this could be good for my career. But I just want to let you know, yeah. first of all, my father lives in Iran. So if word got back to the yeah. authorities there, they could give him a tar hard time. Secondly, there was this guy, they blinded yeah. him. It's possible if they find out right. that I'm doing this at the comedy store, they could maybe blow up the comedy store. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> They you went that far. I went something went like that far. something like that. <laughs> blow you up. Yeah. <laughs> so so Corey's like, oh, okay. Um, let me call you back. And then, so apparently she called Mitzi oh, in between. Wow. Five minutes later, Maz, just wear something comfortable. You'll be fine. Oh, that's awesome. So thank God I got out of that. Now years later, after Mitzi put us together, she was so she was such a proponent of mine. She gave me a lot of confidence because mm -hmm. when she put us on the on the Arabian Night Show, I had like twenty five minutes tops. Yeah. But she used to make me close and do 45 to an hour. Wow. And then I'd come off stage and she'd be like, I like what you're doing. You know, you're going to do your special at the comedy store. Richard did it there. Richard Pryor. She's of like, course. So she was Live throwing my name. Strip, yeah. She's throwing my name in with Richard. Wow, and I'm like, yeah. whoa. She's like, you got, you're got good, you good for your people. Like, she was like that. Did you did you do it? There? Well, here's, so, then yeah. so, so then she says to me one time. So one time she's sitting around the, uh, this room with us. And she's got Ahmed and Aaron and all of us. And she's like, you're all doing great. Ahmed, you're doing great. Aaron, you're doing great. And just going down. And she comes to me. She's like, you. You were supposed to wear the turban. <laughs> I was like, I thought you forgot. I thought you forgot. She still remembers. If you want a special there, you'll be wearing that yeah. turban. <laughs> so to button the whole story up, yeah. years later when they were putting my name on the club, uh. I'm like, you know, because at first when we became regulars, they didn't put our names on the club because I guess they didn't have a – the club wasn't doing well. So, like, we don't have money to put names up. I don't know. It does. We could have put uh. up our own names. So – the, somebody paid to get our names up and I went to see where my name was and I look, look, look and they go, it's in the front. I go in the front and I look up oh. Eddie Murphy, oh. Maz Jobrani. Oh. And I was like, holy shit. You know, as a comic, I knew that's where it was going. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Yeah. yeah but I, I get goosebumps anyway. Yeah. Because that's that's amazing. I remember when, you know, my name was up there. It's like, and what's really weird is it looks like my signature. 
It's amazing. It's, that's so weird. It's my, my signature, actually, my old signature, yeah. my, my yeah. new one is like, who, who cares anymore? You can put a, you know, your, your dog's paw print on there. They'll, they'll yeah, accept yeah. it. Yeah. All right, you're not going to get out of this. I know we're supposed to wrap up. Yes. The fishing trip. So the fishing. No, 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 no. Let me yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. tell. I have to, you're not going to run it right up. to Set your excuse. Go, 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 go. All right, I go on a fishing trip every year. I, 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 I charter a boat. We catch major great fish. A lot of people, they say, no, I, I, I'll vomit. Don't even invite me again. So I, I'm reaching out to people. And this is shocking, by the way. I reached out to six women comics. I usually have only guys. Five of them said yes immediately. So th- let me just preface it by saying that, okay? Yeah. This guy gets back to me, perfect for my show, Straight Eye for the Whip Guy. <laughs> my wife has me running the kids to school. And I, and I said, well, tell her it's, well, you're taking a day off or get a neighbor or something. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's... So, so now, what is your excuse? So here's and then my we excuse. have to close. So here's my first of all, uh, when I like you said, you and I are getting to know each other more and more. And when you first told me about this fishing trip, I was like, I am so into it. Right. And I'll tell you one of the reasons. I'm not a big fishing dude. Yeah, me either. But my son, who's 13 now, oh. since he was young, he's always been like, "Can we go fishing? Can we go fishing? Yeah. Can we go fish?" And I'm always, we go, we go on vacation. I go, "Let's go fishing here. Let's go." But it never happens. Right. So when he told me, I was like, "This would be awesome. I'll bring my son." Father Craig. son bonding. Yeah. yeah. This is fa- so that's what I thought, right? When you told me it's happening, I go, "Fantastic!" On a Thursday, whatever, great. And and I called my wife. Now the the reason I called my wife about all this is because, because you check in with everything. Check in with everything, but also she runs. You. We Go were ahead. on ro- we were on lockdown for a year when, when yeah. we were around. Right. So you know it's like things built up. Yeah. So now that things have opened up, I am on that road like a lot to the point where sometimes I I realized I just recently realized I got to stop gigging when I'm in town because you think you and I think oh a spot at the yeah. you know comedy store or laugh factory sure I'll come do it. But then you go, wait a minute, if I do that, then then right. that's that night when we were going to sit there and watch a movie with the family sure. or have a dinner. so All I, for 25 bucks. Yeah, and I, <laughs> so I put all that together, and I realized I got to start, like, scheduling right. So what happened was I originally thought my son could come, but then his school starts. Yeah. And now he's in eighth grade. It's that grade where okay, you can't really. All right. so, so then I thought. Then I thought. Okay, I'll go by myself. Well, I thought if I go by myself, yeah. and this is like this is like the I'm gonna be home for like two two days. Okay. If I tell my wife, listen, those two days I'm back, where you're driving the kids to practice and school oh and all this other God. stuff. If I said, if I said, listen, Here I'm gonna go. take. This is why you're on my show. Straight eye for days. the whip guy, as if she's gonna divorce you gonna, over you one day know. when you go home and you bring back fish. <laughs> I know. You'll be eating with your family dinner. I'm telling you, fresh, I would love fresh. I would love. You're going. You don't even you're know. Like, I'm not accepting yeah. this. You are. I'm not accept. I'm doing an intervention right now. I. I always tell guys this. I go. Oh, my wife. My wife. She's going to kill me. No, I'm she's t- not going to. Literally, I'm she's t- not going to kill you. There is I no have, punishment for this. Craig, she I might give a, you a little bit of shit. I'm, this is California. Pretend you're it's on the road for God's sake. It's a road game. Community property. She I'll gets get you a microphone for God's sake. You played a shopping center <laughs> left to your family for God. A strip center it was down next the block. to a CBD store. I don't care. You still weren't home. <laughs> all right. Know, this is a day you're going to come right. out with us. I'm all telling right. you, we have a blast. We catch fish, and then here's the good news. I'm going to make this promise to you. Yes. I will get you on the boat for free with your son. There's the bribe for your wife. If you can get my kid out of school that day, because my wife was all about it. She's like, oh, you're going to go with the son? That's fantastic. Father, oh, father, get him out son. of school? She was all about it. Like, I, I have no power on the school. She was, she was, in, she was, she was like, this is amazing. She, she yeah. was happy that I was going to take my... She goes, that ah. sounds great. You guys should definitely do father-son bonding. Okay. I didn't even go back to her... With the proposition of going alone because I know the answer. No, the answer is you're going. They have five sports and ten schools, That's and it. my wife's driving around. Tell us your tell us your Instagram and all that. At How do we find Maz Jobrani. Jobrani. J O B R A N I. Easy to find. All and right. the podcast is Back to School with Maz Jobrani. Yeah. And Craig and I will be coming to your town to fish soon. No, you are going fishing. All I am right. telling you, all right? all right? I got a lot of promises. I'll make them off the air. All right. Folks, I hope you had a great time. Maz is one of my favorites. Now you follow him, and he'll be one of yours. He's constantly posting, by the way. It's, yeah. <laughs> you'll, um, you'll, you'll be entertained 24-7, yeah. okay? Yeah. And it's free. Yeah. All right, go see him wherever he's performing, and make sure you go just add comedy to your life. Put it as part of your prescription. It's the best medicine you can possibly have. It'll deal with everything in your life. All right. Follow us. Make sure you like us and all that kind of stuff. Spread the word about it. It's enlightened up the podcast. And just remember folks, enlighten the fuck up. Okay. Yes. See you next time.